And when I applied this technology to people with Alzheimer's and early stage dementias, we found a certain class of molecules was very, very low in all these individuals. And I didn't know what it was at the time. In the 1700s, scurvy was cured with vitamin C. In the early 1900s, vitamin D cured rickets and niacin cured pellagra. All crippling diseases resolved through everyday nutrients. Could there be a similar solution for Alzheimer's? When I did the mass spec analysis, it turned out these molecules were plasmalogens. 20, 30% of your entire lipid brain, volume of your brain. 50% of the membrane of your heart is plasmalogen. But the role in cognition is even more shocking. Alzheimer's treatment aims in part to rid the brain of amyloid protein plaques, first discovered by Dr. Alois Alzheimer 100 years ago. But what if that starting point is wrong? Large neuropathology studies have shown that the location of the plaques doesn't disturb neurons around those plaques. So it's not even open for question. And these pathologies are not leading to reduced cognitive function. 15 years of research led Dr. Dan Goodenow to discover a single molecule much lower than normal in the blood of Alzheimer's sufferers. That molecule is plasmalogen, an essential brain nutrient that gets lower as we age. Is Alzheimer's being caused by loss of plasmalogen in brain cells? And most crucially, what happens when we restore it? Welcome to Vital Science, where we look at how to get healthier from all angles, from the biochemical and nutritional to the things we do that nourish our minds and our souls. I'm Brendan Fallon. For Alzheimer's Key to Cure, part one of this four-part series, we'll learn what the Alzheimer's gene APOE4 signals about Alzheimer's cause, and how Dr. Goodenow's invention pinpointed low plasmalogens in Alzheimer's. Dr. Goodenow, welcome back to Vital Science. Hi, Brendan. Happy to be back. Great to have you back and to talk about this topic that you've produced some very promising and exciting research on and that I know you're conducting some clinical trials into at the moment. Alzheimer's. This is something, I mean, we hear about this potential escalation, that it's going to be a massive problem with the aging population. And that's on a societal level, but this is something that impacts so many people's lives. I mean, my grandmother died with Alzheimer's. It's heartbreaking to, to see someone you love gradually lose their memories. And you, I can only imagine what the experience must be like for them to have those things slip away. Obvious question is, is there anything that can be done about this? Because generally it seems that the medication isn't doing a lot. And um, is there hope for, for really treating someone who has this condition? Well, absolutely. So the short answer to can you recover from Alzheimer's disease? And the answer to that is an absolute, you know, unfiltered yes. So that is doable. And it's one of those stories, Alzheimer's is, um, it's a scary disease. It's now considered one of the top most feared diseases in the world. And cancer used to be that most feared disease for most people for so many years. And now Alzheimer's is basically right up there with cancer. Even though six times more people will die of cancer and people, more people will die of heart disease than will die of Alzheimer's. So the fear of Alzheimer's gives you an understanding of why this is such um, a devastating disease. And it really comes down to you know, the concept of if you die of cancer, you still die as yourself with cancer. Like you actually die with cancer. When you die of Alzheimer's, you don't even die as yourself because your brain and your mind and who you are has gone. When you th think about Alzheimer's, people understand it to be the, the cognitive decline, people's memory, people's mental functioning declines. So what, what do people actually die of if they're dying with, with dementia or with, with Alzheimer's? That's a good one. Most of them die of actually lung-related infection issues because they get institutionalized. So the typical progress, the process is the following, right? Your loved one gets diagnosed with, with Alzheimer's disease. They can typically stay in their home with a caregiver for a couple of years, maybe two years, maybe three years on average. And they'll be very broad, depending on the, the quality of the care they can get at home. And then they move into a long-term care facility because at some point in time, the family and the caregiver, their health deteriorates. They can't take care of that person and they need more sophisticated, you know, skilled nursing care. But yeah, so pulmonary failure, heart failure um, are the things that typically, so they typically die of some other related core physiological breakdown. And this is the other part people forget. There is actually only one type of death in this world. Okay, like you don't, you don't actually die of a heart attack. You don't actually die of pneumonia. You die when your brain loses oxygen. Okay, there's only one type of death is brain death. And the entire part of your body is basically designed to keep your brain alive. Dr. Goodenow, 
How did you come to be researching this? Where, where did your research with Alzheimer's begin and what has been the, the major discovery there? Yeah, that's, that's an interesting story because, so my background is in synthetic organic chemistry, my PhD is in psychiatric medicine, looking at the biochemical mechanisms of disease. This is what I was trained in, looking at understanding how the brain works. And so I came into the Alzheimer's understanding biochemical mechanisms, understanding the prodrome, what occurs in an individual before they get Alzheimer's. Because Alzheimer's is not something you get. You actually, it's, you lose cognition, okay? You have a healthy functioning person in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s that are cognitively normal, fully interactive with their environment, and they lose that, okay? So Alzheimer's is not something that comes into you and, you know, like a Pac-Man and starts eating at your brain. Like that's not what's happening. You actually lose function. So slow thinking, inability to pull up memory, inability to have executive functioning, these are actually functional activities of our body. Back in the 90s, when I started getting into this research in great detail, the, it, was, it was in the height of the genomics revolution. People were se uh, sequencing the, higher, the human genome, they're sequencing plant genomes and animal genomes, and they were trying to find the, the genetic associations with everything, right? What, what is a genome in ge just a snapshot? So the genome is what you're born with. So the genome is your DNA. Every single cell of your body has exactly the same DNA. And that DNA gets expressed in different ways. Like your heart cell will, will express this DNA slightly different than a lung cell, slightly different than a brain cell, for example. With the vaccines, people talk about the messenger RNA stuff. That's how your, your genome expresses itself. And this messenger RNA then is used to create the proteins, the physical structure, the receptors, the ion channels, your muscles, all that protein in your body is built from your DNA. So every single protein in your body can actually be linked back to a specific gene, sequence-wise. But really, what's interesting about Alzheimer's is there's a, there is a genotype called the apolipoprotein E genotype, E2, E3, E4. And the E4 genotype has a higher probability of dementia. And this was only discovered, I think, in the 80s. ApoE is a cholesterol transport protein. It's an actually, it's a type of HDL molecule that transports cholesterol in our blood. But what makes ApoE so unique is that it's almost, it is fundamentally the exclusive cholesterol transport protein in the brain. So the brain makes all of its own cholesterol. So the cholesterol in your blood never, ever reaches your brain. Okay. In fact, your brain makes its own cholesterol and sends it into your blood supply. So when what happens in your periphery, you have what I would call an interstate highway system of transport, your, your veins, your arteries, they're shipping blood and cholesterol and nutrients all very, very long distances. So they have these super highways, okay? But your brain is not built that way. Your brain is like Chinatown. It's like a little bunch of little side streets. So you don't have trains and big semi trucks transporting things. You, things are transported on smaller things that can get in and out of all the little vesicles of, of the brain. It's like a microcosm of a, a larger city. Correct. And so it uses a bunch of small trucks, if you will. Um, and that small truck is ApoE. And so in Alzheimer's disease, what they found, so even though we knew about the ApoE genotype way back in, I think, the 60s and 70s, because it, it's um, so people that have certain rare blood diseases, they've been knowing about this for a long time. But somehow 